Um, so I always appreciated that uh, from you guys. And, and, and obviously from a, from a business perspective is my question, which just follows right now, is I don't think it was a bad idea. MLG TV, I think that it was the right step in the right direction. Obviously, Twitch had its, its footprint and, and, its, uh, and its pillar in esports, the way that YouTube has its pillar in esports. But I think that you guys, you Machinima, were like in the prime position to sort of be this like third and fourth iteration of what video game entertainment could be from an entertainment standpoint. What was mm -hmm. the thought behind that? And, you know, pretty much the, the MLG TV uh, era. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was pretty simple. Again, it goes back to thinking like a media person versus a tech person or a video game publishing person. Um, you know, I, I understood a lot of the advertising world and um, I had constant uh, conversations with the guys at Twitch. And I just said, look, we're investing millions of dollars a year in creating content that we put on your platform and you don't pay us for it. You don't pay us rights fees. And we're okay with that because it's all new. You guys are new. It's cool. Mm -hmm. But we also need, um, you know, just the distribution isn't enough. We need to make money on this content. And so you got to increase your focus on monetization, on advertising, on different products, and potentially even, you know, I don't know that I want to spend millions of dollars on this beautiful, highly produced content with all the best players in the world and teams and all this stuff and have it be sitting right next to some kid, you know, in his underwear in his bedroom eating Cheerios while he's playing a video game. Right. But like there was, you know, it wasn't streaming back then was not at the quality of streaming by creators today. Right. It's not, um, there was no, you know, Nate Shot Studio and Hex Quarters and all those things that you guys do today. It didn't look great. So, and I don't really care. I'm not making a judgment on the quality of the content. But when I go to Pepsi or Coca Cola and I show them this, and then they switch over, and there's, you know, not doesn't look great, right? Yeah. So it wasn't a great ad platform. And the sort of San Francisco Bay Area tech ethos has always been: we don't care about money. We just need to make it huge. Yeah. And then somebody else will figure it out. And and so that was the constant sort of problem with those guys. And while we, you know, always got along and I still get along with them, it, it became really tense. It was like, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't invest millions of dollars. We're never going to make any money back. So we tried a few different things with them. We had a much more sophisticated advertising business than I think anybody thought, not mm -hmm. just in terms of sales, but technology. Um, and well, to that, I'll say, then why did we get five Pizza Hut ads in a row? Sure. Because <laughs> they pay it every time. <laughs> I love it. Hey, look, one, one, thing you, one thing you know very well, the, the way that I know very well, the way that every single fan of esports knows very well, that as long as the creator is getting paid to entertain and we don't have to sort of pay something unless we want to, yeah. That, that were, by all means, if Pizza Hut was the one that's going to come in and, and 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 bless everybody with the ability to make a living off of this thing, everybody would have supported that, right? So yeah. uh, the only reason yeah. I say that was because obviously, like that that was like that happened. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. They paid so, every single time, and people got paid for it. You know, and I'd rather have so, five of those than zero of the other <laughs> ones. <laughs> so when we launched MLG TV, we actually built all the ad technology first, and then the streaming part. And mm -hmm. my idea was. Twitch is going to be amazing. Twitch would be like live YouTube. And then we could be HBO. Yeah. Right. We could be the premium tier. Yes. And then we would go to everybody else in esports, ESL, and everybody else and say, look, yeah. Twitch is great. Twitch is great for building audience. But if you need to make money, we're building this whole thing around a commercial stack. And um, the reason you got five Pizza Hut ads at once was because it was all algorithmic there are no people involved in running mm -hmm. those commercials it was just happening based on so so in the ad world and a lot of the stuff that you see on youtube basically there's a real-time constant auction going on all the time so programmatic some, programmatically somebody some algorithm is figuring out where to get the most money at that split second and how to put it in front of the right people mm -hmm. and so that sort of happened and whenever you're launching a new product like that with a relatively small audience you get too much concentration so you'll get limited number of advertisers buying at the same time. But the interesting thing about that, that I don't think a lot of people knew is that for probably five years before that, I had been going to all the financial services products, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, all the automakers in Detroit, everybody. I was selling everybody 
you know, you got to get in on this, be a sponsor. This is amazing. You can't believe what our audience is. And they'd be like, you're not on TV. It's not a sport. I don't really get it. Yeah. And the minute we launched MLG TV, probably my biggest, um, I had, I had two really interesting conversations. One was with, um, a guy who ran GM plant works, which was like the, there's an entire business GM created just to be the advertising buyer for GM commercials. Um, that guy said to me, you know, I don't even think soccer is going to work in this country because our dance card is pretty full on sports and you guys are way after soccer. So I just don't really see it taking off, but maybe when you get it to TV sometime, you know, we'll buy some ads, some Chevy ads from you guys or whatever it was. And I was like, okay, you know, like the Chevy Volt or something like that. Yeah. Time. The good ones. I was like, okay. Yeah. He's like, come back in a couple of years when you grow up, maybe we'll figure it out. Well, like a year later we launched MLG TV and I turned it on, all of a sudden there's Chevy ads all over the place. And the reason was because algorithms don't have judgment on the type of content. It's, if they're only eyeballs, measuring the yeah. audience. Yeah. You know, is there a 20 year old kid who wants to buy his first car on the other side of this content? Then we're putting the, the Volt ad in front of them. Yeah. And I got a report and it was like, I don't know how many thousands of Chevy ads ran in the first week of MLG TV and I sent it to that guy. And you know, he sort of ate some crow. I don't think we ever got any direct buys from them, but yeah. it was just proof point. That was the first time that I could prove. And it wasn't just GM. It was lots, you know, it was financial services, travel, like all these big advertising categories that I knew wanted to reach this audience. It was just, you know, the 40 or 50 something year old guy who was in charge of writing those checks. Didn't, didn't believe it. Didn't understand what we were talking about at that time. Online video wasn't anywhere near as big as it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all, all those kind of things were inhibiting factors but you could prove it with technology. You could prove that the algorithms were much smarter than the people. Um, and eventually, you know, I had a pretty big sales staff with MLG TV, eventually started getting rid of all the sales staff too, because my algorithms were better sellers than the people. And on the buy side, the algorithms were smarter too. So that, that all worked really well. And MLG TV was profitable in its first month as, as you were partly a beneficiary of that too. Yes. You remember, um, but the problem with it was back to the rights issue, right? We didn't own a lot of that was Call of Duty. We we're trying to, I was trying to sort of prove that if we could get all the pro players and pro teams and the pro league all in one place, that would yeah. be a premium network with premium content. I yeah. didn't want, you know, 20,000 other kids who just wanted to stream Call of Duty. I only wanted the best players that were pros and really creating cool content. And that worked really, really well. But at the end of the day, we didn't own Call of Duty and we couldn't go fast enough to get other vertical kind of game communities on that platform. Yeah. And it wouldn't and it work. Was a right? little too competitive. Yeah. I don't, who knows if it would work. Well, but. That, but, but I mean, it's not, it's not as easy as uh, I'm going to start a game and there's going to be a competition. It's, it's going to be an esport, right. right? Like nowadays, right. it's like everybody's catering to esport and it's only competition, this and the other. Back yeah. then, it was just yeah. artists creating games that people play. Right. And, and it was a difficult pitch and, um, you know, obviously Twitch didn't like that we did that and created kind of a war and we had to go after people. But look, the other, I'm still very proud of MLG TV. One, because it was so profitable and did so well, but two, because it created the first tension in the marketplace where, as you know, the Twitch guys had to come back after your, your team, your talent, your guys and offer you money to move back to Twitch. Yeah. That's media rights. Yeah. And so in and, a lot and, of ways, you, it helped create the, the market. And you fast forward, uh, call it, okay, <laughs> so that's 2013. You fast forward seven years. Well, no, so fast forward six years. And then you have a uh, Ninja Mixer deal. You know, yeah. that, that, that yeah. sort of, again, the ripple that I was talking about in the beginning of all this is like yeah. this, every single move that happens in esports is going to echo in eternity because somebody yeah. somewhere is going to continue to do that. Well, now, even more important than that, I think, I think Tyler met Jessica because she worked for us at an MLG event. Really? <laughs> I did not know that. She, yeah, that's so awesome, man. And and again, like if if you think about, if you think about, I don't know, I don't know if it was actually at an event, but yeah, I know yeah. he played, he played, and she worked for us. So yeah. So.